The Physics Nobel Prize for 2021 was given for modeling climate change. Well, at least partially. This begs the question, is climate modeling really physics? And why is it worth a Nobel Prize? The answer is yes, and it definitely was worth a Nobel Prize, but let's discuss it. The 2021 Nobel Prize in Physics was given for groundbreaking contributions to our understanding of complex systems. But what does a complex system mean? Broadly speaking, this can refer to any system that often displays chaotic behaviour. Chaotic behaviour is not something out of a science fiction movie. Put simply, it is the behaviour of a system where small changes in the initial conditions result in drastically different outcomes. Edward Lorentz, who is best known as the founder of modern chaos theory, describes chaos as, when the present determines the future, but an approximate present does not approximately determine the future. There are many different systems that exhibit this type of phenomena, and many are related to the natural world, such as weather patterns, fluid flow, heartbeat irregularities, the stock market, and many more. Now obviously we want to understand how many of these systems work so that we can make reliable predictions. This is where physicists and mathematicians have taken charge, looking into this type of modeling, not only for traditional physics systems, but for any system that is chaotic. One such system is climate. The climate modeling part of the Nobel Prize was given for the physical modeling of the Earth's climate, quantifying variability and reliably predicting global warming. This was given to two people, Sakura Manabe and Klaus Hasselmann. Although the award is a little bittersweet, with Hasselmann saying that he would rather have no global warming and no Nobel Prize. For this section of the Nobel Prize, the Nobel Committee concluded that, without soberly probing the origins of variability, we cannot understand the behavior of any system. Therefore, only after having considered these origins do we understand that global warming is real and attributable to our own activities, that a vast array of the phenomena we observe in nature emerge from the underlying disorder, and that embracing the noise and uncertainty is an essential step to the road towards predictability. In 1967, Manabe together with another major climate scientist, Richard Weatherold, published the first computer model of climate sensitivity to carbon dioxide. This model, which was quite limited in comparison to modern models, predicted an increase of 2.4 degrees from the doubling of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which is remarkably similar to modern predictions. A few years later, he developed a computer model for the entire Earth, which had applications beyond climate change, such as predicting El Ninos, Hasselmann was inspired by the work of Brownian motion and attempted to apply this methodology to the climate. He was able to demonstrate in 1976 that the climate did indeed respond to random variabilities just like Brownian motion. Importantly, this discovery enabled scientists to characterize how much global warming was truly anthropogenic. This concept is also where the popular story of a butterfly flap its wings can lead to a storm somewhere else. Or in other words, minute changes in the initial conditions can lead to drastically different outcomes. That is, weather is chaotic and thus hard to predict. The second half of the Nobel Prize was given to Giorgio Parisi for the discovery of the interplay of disorder and fluctuations in physical systems from atomic to planetary scales. In the 1970s, some magnets were discovered that didn't behave in the same manner as other magnets. Previously, we assumed magnets worked using an Ising model, which is a grid of spins that are locked to pointing either up or down. This new type of magnet was a spin glass, which is where the spins can become disordered. That is, that some can point in random directions while others are still locked in place. To understand this, you can think of a system of three spins in a triangle. To minimize the energy of the system, the spins want to be antiferromagnetic, so they try to point in opposite directions. Well, if two of the spins are pointing in opposite directions, then the third can point in any direction. 
It also doesn't really matter which one is in this free state, leading to a constant exchange of which spin is locked and which are free. Well, this is called spin glass because it is frustrated, and this resembles the many possible states that glass can take because it is not crystalline. In 1979, Parisi made a breakthrough with something called replica symmetry breaking. He showed that you can model spin glass as having an infinite number of possible ground states, so that any of these ground states can form, and none of them are more preferred than any others. This led to a whole new method of how to model complex disordered systems, and has been used in many different scenarios. Essentially starting a whole new field of study that was previously not possible. Thor's Hans Hanson, one of the chair of the Nobel Committee for Physics, had this to say. The discoveries being recognised this year demonstrate our knowledge about the climate rests on solid scientific foundations based on a rigorous analysis of observations. This year's laureates have all contributed to us gaining deeper insight into the properties and evolution of complex systems. Some people may have been surprised by this year's Physics Nobel Prize, but the work does speak for itself. These scientists have made major contributions to a complex field that has had real life benefit for all of us. Thanks for watching, have fun, see you next time.